Hello and welcome to Faith Orb. Again, we've come to that time, that moment where we look to God and we receive even word from Him and then an opportunity again to consider what His word says and pray and ask God for specific and for particular things. Welcome again to Faith Orb. Has been your week. I'm sure that you are working in the fullness of His grace and you are working in divine speed according to the leading and the power of the Spirit. I believe uh, that our empowering uh, is by the Spirit. I believe that the fuel that energizes us to get to the next level is the Holy Ghost. Again, I say keep working with the Spirit. Uh, many weeks ago, we started a journey together uh, getting close to God. And we're going to take it further um, even today. And I'm super excited at the Word of the Lord. I'm excited at what the Lord asked for us today. I'm excited about this table of fat fish, and I'm sure that your life will never be the same again. Will you take a minute, will you take a moment to invite your friends, uh, take this link uh, wherever you found it, uh, share this link on Facebook, share this link on YouTube, uh, share it all through your social media platforms, uh, on your statuses, uh, let your friends know it is time to be empowered again uh, by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is the God of the Word, and it's such a delightful thing to prepare and to hear God even speak to us. Before we go into the Word today, can we just take a moment uh, to just thank God for His power, can you take a moment to thank God for how he has helped you thus far? You know, today I began to look at the last one year and I saw that the Lord has been faithful. I don't want you to probably look that far behind. Can you look at January 1st now? Look at the awesomeness of God in you, in yours, in your family, all around you. Can you begin to thank God for his blessings? Can you begin to thank God for his blessedness? Can you begin to thank God for the things he's done for you and your family. Can you thank him for the storms uh, that he stilled concerning you? Can you thank him for how he has kept you from the hands of the vowler, the destroyer, how he has kept you stronger, how he has kept you high and mighty in his love? Will you exalt him this evening? Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for all that he will yet do. Thank him for his empowering over you and yours. Can somebody begin to thank God concerning that business? Uh, thank him because you have seen the goodness of God. Uh, you know, somebody was speaking and said, even if I lie, <laughs> God is good. I mean, God has been so good that it's, it's, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. Can you thank the Lord because of his goodness? Thank him because of his kindness. Uh, thank him because of his faithfulness. Thank him because of his joy concerning you and yours. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefit. Oh, what joy. What joy to be, to receive of the Father daily blessings. Can you thank the Lord for that? Exalt him, magnify him, and enthrone him. Hallelujah. I want you again to ask for divine speed. I want you to ask for acceleration as it concerns your, that project, that thing that seems to have stalled. <laughs> Can you ask the Lord that movement comes? By the power of the Lord, movement comes. Someone say, you don't know how many years that's taken that it has been stalled this way. I don't care. 40 years Israel was stalled, but the Lord said, move forward. Because the word of the Lord is coming to you tonight. Sir. Can you say, move forward? Can you declare to that thing? In this prophetic hour, I declare you are going forward. In this prophetic hour, I declare divine movement for any area of your life that has been stored. I declare divine movement in the name of Jesus. Many may say there is a casting down for you and yours. There are liftings. I see you going forward. Wherever you have been chained in, the lead has been pulled over your head. I declare it is time to break forth. This evening, in this prophetic hour, can I declare? Go forward. I declare and I speak to your spirit, man. Go forward. Advance. Gain speed. Accelerate. Enter into the fullness. Even of God's plan and God's mind concerning your life. I see somebody tonight. It's your turning point. This encounter is your turning point. This encounter is the moment where things begin to change for good for you and your family. This moment right now is that moment where all things turn around even for your good. What a God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. 
If you can't pray in the spirit, you have a prayer language. Can you lift up your voice in prayer? I begin to pray in the spirit. Viado krapale Eduardo Rosa, Ezonama kapale vlo bakile klodoshi galia, revavano brakali. This is not a time to be distracted. Focus your spirit. Come on, pray. Come on, pray, brother. Pray. She's to pray. Lezanda li kavovo voli how. E de somba kapale supruvi vrandeli kavori vavavanusia hele hele boshi kapa lendo ni landene vokoru baliha re papa pale kopa seketeli kata kata bevo hevele kelo vrandeshi aliha rosande peli kambari aliya geta aliya geta zona vane voni va kapa shi aliya dava rendori kalivra dosa geta yama hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, Ethana, King of Glory. In Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. All right. Um, so I want to go into God's word today. And I'm excited at what I want to share with you. Because I believe that when God releases his word, his, his word is released in such a way that it transforms and blesses our lives. Right? I want to speak to you on something that is very key as it concerns the mind and the heart of God for the believer. And, and, and I just want you to follow me very closely today. I want to start, and this is a place where you shouldn't be distracted. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 and then verse 10, here was Paul praying. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed even to his death. Being conformed even to his death. I want to share with you what I've titled Increasing in the Knowledge of God. Increasing in the Knowledge of God. Don't forget we are on a journey of getting close to God. And today I want to share with you on increasing in the knowledge of God. Every time I found this scripture, it challenges me. It challenges me. Because this was Paul. Paul, I mean, I really ask, is this not Paul? Paul that wrote the scriptures and wrote letters to the churches. And Peter said that the things he wrote are sometimes difficult to be understood. Now, Paul, who wrote two-third of the New Testament. Paul. And Paul said that I may know him. Please, brother Paul, what is there to know about God that you have not known? What revelations of the Christ have you not found? What is there to know about God that you haven't known? But he said, that I may know him. Today I'm preaching on knowing God more. Listen, dear friends, I found out there is no a place we get to that we can now say, now we know him. We can increase in our knowledge of the Christ. We can increase in our knowledge of God. Why? Because there is still always something new about him that we have not yet known. I've studied the life of generals. I've looked at their life. I've dwelled, lived closely with some of them. And one thing I've found out is that they keep reading the Bible every day. One thing I've found about them is that they keep reading books. They still honestly meditate on the truth of God. And you can begin to say, after 30 years of working with the Lord, what are they still seeking for? It is because the Lord is an inexhaustible vast of resources. Is a, is a resource you cannot consume and you cannot finish. The Lord is inconsumable as it concerns evil knowledge. So that there is more that you know, but there is always more that is to be known. What a God that we shall. You know, you get to a point in your journey in academics that you say, I, I, I know these things. You can't get to that journey on this side of eternity and say you have known the Lord. But that's the truth about Christianity and about the God that we share. But the reason we speak about the knowing of knowledge of God or knowing him more or knowing him better or increasing our knowledge of him 
is because there is a possibility to know him. Many gods of the ancient world were not gods that people were allowed to know. There was nothing called intimation. There was nothing called a knowledge of. Because those gods were so fair, they were so great, that even man could not assess them except through an intermediary. And in old times, the intermediaries were the lesser gods, right? So that it took the lesser gods for you to be able to approach even the God, the God of the heavens and the God of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, there is more to know in God because the God of the Christians, the God of the New Testament and the Old, the God of the Bible, has made the pathway to himself clear to us. Listen, dear friends, in the Old Testament and in temple worship, the priest always sacrificed to God. There was nobody who lived in the presence of God. They enter into the Holy of Holies at designated time of the year and then worship God and then offer sacrifices uh, even before the Ark of the Testament, which tells us something, that at that time there was no one who could say really that they were intimate with God because the access point to God was only via a priesthood and the lineage of the priesthood. Therefore, if you are not of the lineage of the priesthood, you could never assess the presence of God. So that it is what the priest tells you about him that he is. It is what the rabbi tells you about him that he is. Therefore, the God and the knowledge people have about God at that time and in that season was basically about what men told them about God. It was not something they found a personal revelation of God for themselves. It was what they were told about the Lord. Therefore, what they took and the reality they lived and walked in were information and things they were told even by men. Therefore, you have in scriptures how Joshua and Moses taught them about the ways of the Lord. You I read in scriptures how Ezra came and taught them about the God, even the God of Israel. Why? Because intimacy and the knowledge of God was not permitted for many people. Because the God of the Bible had been secluded and he secluded himself even to the place of the ark, even the ark of the testament, even in the inner court or what you call the holy of the holies. But something dramatic and something awesome happened. And that's to tell us that God now is interested in us coming in and fellowshipping and having intimacy with him. When Jesus the Christ died at Calvary, scripture records that the temple cloth was rented from up to down. That means, and he told us, that that means that the pathway to the presence of the Lord is not available for everyone. The uh, history, church history tells us that after 70 AD, if they found it difficult to find people, even from a lineage of priests, even in Israel. Why? Because that office is no longer necessary. Because every believer is now ordained into that office. Every believer can now access the true room of God. That offers us an opportunity, but it's also a responsibility. Why is it an opportunity? It's an opportunity because now we can assess the Father. Now I can get to know God by myself. Now the Spirit is in me because Jesus said, I will pray to the Father that I will send you a comforter, the Spirit of truth. He said the word won't receive him, but you will receive because it will dwell on your inside. So God is no longer in the Ark of the Covenant in Israel. God is inside of me. God is out of me. That's an opportunity, but that's also a responsibility. It means that to know God is now possible. The knowledge of God is as possible for a priest as is as possible for a member. Therefore, what you know about God is what you want to know about him. And that takes us even to Paul. You will see in Paul a desire and a task even for God. A desire and a task even to know him better. It is that desire that was encapsulated in the words he wrote. He said that I may know him, that I may know him. Perhaps Paul was telling us, he was teaching us a truth upon which the foundation of intimacy and knowledge of God is built, and that is desire. Oh, you cannot grow without desire. You cannot get to know God without desire. The first thing you must have, the starting place, of growing your knowledge of the law is not buying a Bible, sir. 
No, ma. It is not dedicating time to chanting and praying in the spirit. No, sir. What you need to do, the first place is to have a desire to know the Lord. To have a desire to know the Lord. There must be a craving to begin with. A task for the excellency of his glory. A task even for a transformed spirit. A task for a transformed life. Change happens. Momentum is gained in our spirit because we desire. Some people are waiting for the perfect time to begin to seek the Lord. Some people are waiting for the perfect condition to begin to seek the Lord. But Paul of old showed us. Oh, he was formerly called Saul of Tarsus. He showed us that the way to knowing God, the pathway to growing in your knowledge of God is to desire to know Him. Scripture says, then shall you know, Hosea said, when you follow to know the Lord. It is in the desire that the following would come. Without a desire, you will not go in your knowledge of God. I've met people who are just comfortable being Christians. I've, I've, met, I've, met, I've met believers who are comfortable to just be in the sweet by and by. Who are comfortable sitting on the pews and just waiting for their pastors to download information to them about God. I tell people that those people depend on second level revelation. They don't mind. They are comfortable with that. But listen, until there is a desire for more. Until there is a desire for more. No, God, I want to know you more. Where are these people getting this vision from in scriptures? I want to know more. That my eyes of understanding may be enlightened that I may know. Until there is a desire, the prayer of enlightenment will not come. Everything in this kingdom grows by desire. The starting place to knowing God more is not an encounter with God. It's a desire to know Him. It's a desire to know Him. I've met people who have seen Jesus and today they are no longer in the faith. Therefore, encounters are good, but encounters does not transform your spirits. Do you have a desire for Christ? Do you have a desire for Jesus? Do you want to know Him more? The knowledge of God will increase. Why? Because you have a desire to know Him. I remember when I began to follow the Lord. I was looking for every material. I took my scriptures and I began to read them. Why? Because I just wanted to know Him. If you are in a loving relationship with God, you will want to know Him. You will want to know Him. And I say unto you, Jesus was saying, do not be afraid of them who can kill the body, but they cannot kill the soul. Listen, fear and time, which is many reasons people do not want to get close to God. Somebody say, if I get close to Him, He's going to come into ministry. If I get close to him, I'm going to be brought on to a preacher. Listen, dear friends, God's idea is that you pursue him. Until you desire God for yourself, you won't know him. Our knowledge of God is limited, not because God does not want to show himself to us, but because we as a people are not interested in knowing him. I found out a spiritual truth. I found a spiritual truth that those who pursue God and those who desire Him, they know Him. It is according to your desire and your zeal that the knowledge of God is going to be made known unto you. If God have a desire for God, God will have me tell you tonight that He is waiting at the door of your heart. Do you desire to know Him? I'm speaking on the knowledge of God. The first thing I said is that it starts with desire. It starts with desire. Number two, how do I grow in the knowledge of God? What, what, what can we see in the life of Paul and Saul of Tarsus? Saul of Tarsus became Paul is that he had a response to the word of God. A response to the word of God. This was the same Saul of Tarsus who took letters from the high priest and went to Damascus for the purpose of persecuting the church. But when the word of the Lord came to him, when he encountered the Christ and the word of the Lord came to him, he had a significant change because his response was good. Listen, it is not just reading the scriptures. That's important. But it is your response to reading the scriptures. Before, long before I became a minister, I pursued the knowledge of God. And one of the things I told myself was that whatever I found in scriptures, I'm going to do them. I told myself I'm going to live by the dictate of scriptures. Whatever I found as mine in the New Testament, I'm going to declare it and say it in prayers until I see the reality in my life. It was my response to God's word. What's your response to the word of God? 
How do you respond to the word of God? Everyone you found in scripture, everyone you call Patrick General in scripture, the significant thing you see above them is that they have the message and they respond to God and the outcome, the experience was good. What happened is that they had the message. Abraham had the message from the Lord. You see, as he had that message, his response was good. And then the Lord took him on a spiritual pilgrimage. He began to walk with the Lord. Enoch walked with God. The Bible says to us, as it concerns that man, Noah, Noah had a word from God and he responded. Your response will determine your outcome. How do you respond will determine how your life will pan out. If you really want to get to know God, you must determine that this word is true and I'm going to respond to his word appropriately. To every Rema word, there is an appropriate response. For someone who wants to grow even in the knowledge of God, we must respond to God's word with an unfading trust, an unfailing trust. Nothing prepares like God's word. Nothing propels like God's word. And nothing changes our life like the word of God. Can I say to somebody today that the word of the Lord is the basis for knowledge of God. Every knowledge that is found outside of scriptures and cannot be traced back to the principles and the tenets and the spirit of scripture is heresy. Therefore, the foundation for all of the knowledge you have about God is the scriptures. That's why we call it the Holy Book. It is the foundation. It is the constitution of your intimacy with the Lord. If you are going to know God, one thing you must do and one thing you must have if you are really going to know God is that you must respond to his word. Many have received a word from God, but they have not tied their life with the word of God. Listen, my life was tied to that word of God. I tied my life to the word of God. Listen, to know the Lord better, to increase in your relationship with God. You don't take the Bible just as the Bible. No, you must tie your life to the word of God. You must begin to say, Lord, I live by the dictate of this word. This word dictates my starts and my stops. This word dictates how my life pans out. It is as we give the word authority over our life that we begin to experience the blessings of the word and then we begin that journey into the Father. It's a journey that we never get into until eternity. But you see, you do not actively begin that journey until your response to God, God's word is right. It's right. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 16, holding forth the word of life, that I might rejoice in the day of Christ. The word of God is the word of life. You must hold fast to it, steadfastly, steadfastly. Thy words were found and I did eat them. Jeremiah 15, 16, and they were the rejoicing of my soul. You must be a person that eats the word of God. Your, your word, the word of the Lord must be taken as more important to you than your daily food. I found out that those who honor God's word grow in their knowledge of God. Listen, there's no time you will get to. I, my father and the Lord would say, I has read the Bible through more than 200 times. And one of the things I still see him do again and again is that he still reads the scriptures. So that how do you then begin to define that? How do you then begin to explain that? That it still stays with the word of the Lord. How do you explain that? That it still stays with the word of the Lord. Many people will say, I've read that book. No, the book, the Bible cannot be said to have been read. Like I've finished it, I've read it, I've finished it. No, daily it's new. The treasure in that book is about you. Do you want to know God as it concerns righteousness? Do you want to know God as it concerns his law? Do you want to know God as it concerns his person? You can't depend on titrated knowledge and information from the pulpit. God wants to know you, wants you, want to reveal himself to you on a personal level. You must respond to God's word. You must respond to God's word. So the first place in getting to know God more that I found in the life of that man by the name of Paul was that there was a desire, a desire to know him. It's encapsulated in that prayer. That I may know you. That I may know you. And that's the first one. It was a desire. The second one is an appropriate response to the word of God. You must tie your life with the word of God. 
And then number three, you must be a person giving the prayers. What a God. What a God that we serve. You must be a person giving to prayer. Prayer is the secret weapon of the Christian to change the affairs of the world and the affairs of Islam. Let me say this to you. Prayer has been said to be a means of getting things from God. And that is true. Again, people also define prayer as communication with God, especially as it concerns asking and receiving. But I found out that you can never know God except you're a person of prayers. There are depths of, the, of God that you can never know and enter into except you're a person of prayer. There are aspects of Christ that will only be revealed in the place of prayer. Can I say to you that prayer is a must for the believer? Prayer is not what we say or what we do because of religion. Prayer is the means of getting closer to the heart of God. Because as you spend time with him in a place of prayer, he begins to unburden his heart to you. He begins to share deep things with you. He begins to tell you and you begin to note what makes his heart bitter. You begin to be a person who is on God's frequency. Do not be deceived. Prayer is more important than we think it is. Because prayer is an invitation to divinity that humanity may come to his presence. Will you take that opportunity? Because in the place of prayer, you get to know God. Was it not why Jesus was praying that the encounter happened to him? What we call the Mount of Transfiguration didn't just happen. Mount of Transfiguration happened because in the place of prayer, Jesus began to pray. And as he began to pray, the heavens opened and the sights and wonders and things began to happen. The Bible says Elijah came, Moses came. How is this thing possible? Because he was given to prayers. A man of prayer is a man of encounters. A man of prayers is a man that will walk in deep revelations of God. Can I say to you again that reading the Bible is good? Responding to God's word is good? Tying your life with God's word is good? But it is also important to walk with the second leg, which is the two leg of spiritual giants, which is that you must be given to prayers. To know God, you must be a person of prayers. Knowing God, is important. We do not pray to hinder the devil alone. We pray so that we can know the mind of the Father. To know the mind of the Father. The Lord is limitless in his knowledge. And he want to share that with you. He want to share that with you. Through prayers, kingdoms are shaken. Destinies are aligned. Chains are broken. Prison doors are open. And God's will is established. Listen. Mas Bruce said this and I love it. He said, prayer is granting permission to God to interfere in the affairs of men. In the affairs. Of, so that prayer is how you grant permission to God. Prayer is how you enter into the presence of the Father. Prayer is key. Prayer is key. It's communion with God. It's a time of exchanging information, thoughts, and ideas between two allies. Listen, dear friend. You love the Lord, then pray. You want to know more, then pray. You want to get closer to God, then pray. Prayer is key. Prayer is important. Prayer is not an option for the believer. Prayer is a must. You must be given to prayers. You must learn to pray. If you will experience change as it concerns the knowledge of the Father, if you will know God better than you do, then you must pray. You know, we've come to that thing that we say that, you know, it is when I read the Bible that I know God. When I pray, I just bind the devil and ask tough things for me. But that's not true. That's not true. In a place of prayer, you communicate your heart with God. You also receive of God. In a place of prayer, the Holy Spirit begins to enlighten the word in your heart. It begins to share more with you. As you pray in the spirit, your faith is developed to walk in certain spiritual realms. So that it is important that we understand that prayer is not just a tool to receive from God. Prayer is a tool to be with God. It's how we stay with Him. It's how we enjoy His presence. It's how we be with Him. Listen, dear friends. 
There are things no one can do for you. Getting close to God is one of them. Growing your knowledge of God is one of them. You must be a person of prayers. I've received revelations and depth in Christ from the place of prayers. As I began to pray, the Lord began to share certain things with me. He begins to expound my heart. Sometimes I just sit down there in His presence and, say, and, and He just begins to share with me things I would never know apart from Him. Prayer is key. Prayer is important. We need to stop putting God in a straight jacket suit. No. God is not man. While you read your Bible, you can pray. You can ask. And while you pray, you can know the Lord. And that's very key. If we're going to experience knowledge, if we're going to grow in what we know, then prayer is key. Prayer is key. Let me give you number four. I'll give you two more. Let me give you number four. Is that you cannot know God except you have an appropriate heart condition. And I found this to be true in a generation. That the knowledge of the Christ is not so much about your pursuit, your seal, and your time spent in his presence. It's about your heart. Because spiritual things are not like scientific or logical things. In logical things, it is how much you read that you gain. It's how much you study that you understand. But when it concerns spiritual things, it takes the veil being removed. It takes the Holy Spirit sharing in your heart for you to come to certain levels of truth. So that without the Holy Spirit sharing, you can study scriptures, you can stay in scriptures, and you will still not have any revelation. So that your heart condition is key to what you receive of the Lord. Some people are always looking for something deep in scriptures. And that's why their spiritual life is very shallow. Because that's the heart condition. That's what they are looking for. They are reading the scriptures, seeking for new mysteries. Seeking for new refs that they can share that nobody asks or nobody knows. And every time I see people do that, they go in deeply into deep wells of heresy. Why? Instead of them to go deep into Christ, they go deep into hell. Why? Because the Lord will not open the veil so that you can boast or so that you can share deep mysteries. He only unveils himself to those whose heart are perfect and right towards him. The scriptures. Can I ask you, why do you want to know the Lord? Why are you seeking for new revelations? Why do you want to understand new mysteries and deep mysteries? The question of why is the question of intent. And the Lord looks at the acts to reveal himself to people. Why is it that the Lord will bypass thousands and thousands of leaders in Egypt that were, of Isra that were Israelites and Jews and left them and went and seek for himself a man by the name of Moses? Why would the Lord look at the shepherd boy, the last born in his family, and said, I found David my servant, a man after my own heart. It was because he had a heart that pursued God that he really knew the Lord. Look at the prophecy, the prophetic gifts. Look at the prophetic writings. Look at his poetic grace. Look at his lyrics in music. Wow. That was someone who understood the Lord. Even in the times when things were not lining up, he didn't complain. Did he? He wrote prayers for us. Today, we call them our prayers of lament. We call them our prayers of lament. But he wrote those prayers because he knew the Lord. Our heart condition will determine our heavenly possession. Our heart condition will also determine how much of him we know. If you are going to be assured of knowledge in Christ, then your heart must be in a good state. If our heart is not right, we are not right. No matter what we see or do. If your heart is not right in the spiritual, in spiritual matters, you are also not right. Everything comes and proceeds from that seat of your body. The seat of your heart. Today, maybe I'm not just sharing with you principles of 
knowing God and some of you are looking for activities, things to begin to do. Maybe the question of knowing God is actually a function of pruning as at circumcision. Maybe it's a function of aligning your heart with the law. Maybe it's a function of separating the tar from the wheat. Maybe it's a function of true desire coming from your heart. Maybe after then can we only experience the unforced redeem even of grace. Proverbs 23 verse 19 says, Hear thou my son and be wise and guide your heart in the way. There is the way and you must guide your heart. The devil does not have right over your heart. You do, brother. You do, sister. Let your heart be gazed upon him. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. Wow. We do not look at the things of this world which passes away. Save we are above, we must set our heart on things that are above. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Are you focused on the law? Is your heart really focused on the law? I know people who do ministry and say, you know, we're just suffering now, paying the price. It is going to come, we're going to blow so much. We're going to be able to avoid, avoid the Range Rovers. I'll be able to avoid the big things of this world. And when I hear them speak like that, I know there is a heart problem there. There's an heart condition there. Their heart is not right with the Lord. You do not do ministry as a means of increasing or of interest, like it's profiting. Yeah, like profiting. If profit it comes, it comes of the Lord. Our Father has not so learned the Lord. How did God General said when he started ministry? He didn't even know that you could buy a car or they can give on a radio. They just did it because there was a passion to know the Lord and to serve the Lord. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4, verse 23. For out of it flows the issues that govern life, including your spiritual things. So that it is not just desire to know God, it is also your heart condition. The pursuit of God is not a pursuit of degree. It's not a pursuit of PhD. It's a spiritual matter. It takes God to make himself known unto us. And God will not make himself known. Except our heart is truly really for him. Why are you chasing God? Is he for bragging right? Why are you pursuing God? I know folks who could quote the scripture, give you, quote Psalm 119 for you, as long as that verse is, and they even dash you Matthew 5 to 8, just as a gift. But they have zero knowledge of God, zero knowledge of the God. Zero faith, zero knowledge of God, zero conviction, zero persuasion. They are just walking. Parrots, that's what they heard. It's therefore not just sitting down and cramming scriptures that makes you know the law. Knowing the Lord is a result of the law. <laughs> it takes the Lord to reveal himself to you. Your heart condition is important. The state of your heart determines the presence of God in your life. I feel like saying that to somebody again. That the state of your heart determines the presence of God, even in your life. God knows our heart, and that's why this is very important. You can pretend to people, I've got a good heart, I've got a good heart, I've got a good heart, I've got good motive. For I, the Lord, look not at the outward, but on the inside. So he sees, he knows, how we can deceive him. He sees everything. Everything. He sees it all. He will reward us and commit things to our hands, even according to the state of our hearts. What's the state of your heart? I want you to do a diagnosis of your heart. And you shouldn't lie to yourself, what is my heart? Why do I want to know the Lord? Why am I seeking for God? Why? Can I say to you what the Lord said to me many years ago? In a sense, he said to me, sin is no longer man's greatest enemy. Jesus took care of sin on the cross. 
The real enemy of our dying world and the sleeping church is our rebellious, unbelieving and ardent heart. It's time to pursue God. In the middle of the night, He will wake you up. During the day, as you serve on the internet, the Spirit will prod you to read the scriptures. In your workspace, as you have conversation with your colleagues, clients and customers, the Holy Spirit will say that is not the right way to speak. How do you respond? Do you respond with God, this is me? Whether your spiritual life turns around or not, whether your knowledge of God increases or not, it's not dependent on God, it's dependent on the state of your heart. Little wonder David prayed that prayer that New Testament believers don't really like to pray. <laughs> Say, create in me a clean earth. Create in me a clean earth. It's because he understood that the engine room of spiritual intimacy is the heart. Is the earth. If your heart is wrong, there's no fellowshipping with the Father. You can stay in the emotion space. You can stay in the jolly place. You can stay in the fun space. But you will not enter into core intimacy with the Father. Except your heart is right. Would you check your heart this day? Listen. The Lord told me many years ago, your heart will show you where your life is going. Your heart will show you where your life is going. I can tell where you will end by looking at the state of your heart. Just as in the physical, the heart condition can also tell how long a person will live. Such is also your heart and the spiritual. Your heart can also tell us how close you are to God. Our heart is therefore the map for our future. It not only leads us, it gives us the image of where we are going. Bible says in 1 Kings 8, 61, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Let your heart be perfect. Let it be mature. Let it be in a good space. You can't know God when your conscience is judging you. You can't know God and stay in his presence when the devil has a lot of things meeting against you. And you know that. Your heart condition. When I hear stories of people doing crazy stuff in church, pastors, church leaders, deacons, church members, believers, and hear what they do, I'm afraid and I ask, what happened to their hearts? What happened to their hearts? Listen, my mentor used to say to me, he said, when you see somebody who did wrong, he said, don't judge them or throw them away. So the question to ask is, is this a head problem or is this a heart problem? So when is a head problem, is a question of knowledge. It's a question of ignorance. When is the heart problem, it's not knowledge. They know they just decide to do otherwise. There's an heart problem there. The problem of Judas was the other heart problem. That was his problem. Oh, he denied Jesus, rejected Jesus, sold Jesus out. I think that's also agreeably what Peter also did. But Peter had a heart. The difference between Saul and David was the heart. It wasn't what they did. One disobeyed, the other killed. In graffiti, one is what? What the heart. Was it not David? was praying in 1 Chronicles 29, 19, and say, And give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart, to keep thy commandment, thy testimonies, and their status. It takes the heart to walk with the Lord. When you chat away in the quiet time, when you speak to people in a wrong way, when you lash out at your family members, Your heart should tell you certain things. Your heart. And therefore, it's important that we daily use God's word to cleanse our hearts. The cleanser for the heart is the word of God. 
When a man does not read the scriptures as he ought to, he's in danger of a contaminated heart. Because the water of cleansing is the word of God. The more you read the word, the more you can walk in faith. The cleansing power of faith will come. The more you read the word of the Lord, the more you can walk in love. It will cleanse you from impurity. That's the power of the word of God. The more you read God's word, the more you open yourself to the Holy Ghost to move, lead, and direct you. Your heart matters in knowing God. Somebody say, you know what, brother? I really want to know the Lord. I'm assuring you today that the knowledge of the Lord is based on your heart. Your heart condition determines your spiritual sphere and space. You can grow and you can increase better or greater with the Lord. It said by our scriptures, that Jotan became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. The heart is how you prepare your way before the Lord. Oh, time will fail me to tell you about reading the Bible, about the power of meditation, which is another tool in knowing the Lord. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know God? then understand the power of meditation. We live in a fast-paced world, and we are a fast-paced people. In fact, when our life does not have activity and action, we do not believe we are doing anything. Therefore, we actually mark ourselves by our level of busyness. Inactivity in our generation is almost failure. So that the more projects you are doing, the more works you are doing, the more busy you are, the more you say you are doing well. Perhaps that's why we are never quiet to hear God. Perhaps that's why there are multitudes of sounds and voices in our spirit, but we cannot design the voice of God. Why? Because we are in loud spaces and the Lord needs to penetrate your spirit. Perhaps the reason you have not grown in knowledge of God this by reading the Bible is because you are just wanting to turn the pages without meditating on the Word. I've seen people who say to me, I've read the Bible through, and I still look at them and say, you really did? Why? Because they passed through the Word, the Word did not get into them. You can pass through the Word, but the Word needs to pass through you. The way the Word passed through us, it's via meditation in the Word of God. Dear friends, to meditate means to think deeply upon. To meditate means to ponder. It means to mortar again. It means to recall that which I have read. It means to look at it again. It means to continually gaze at the Word of God. Can I ask you, when was the last time you meditated on any portion of scriptures? Can I ask you, it's time to begin to allot time lock the door of your house take your time lie down on your bed just put the word of god in your heart alone and begin to think about it begin to ponder again about that matter begin to ponder again about god's word to you that's the secret of knowing god god sometimes is not known in the business of your day many times most times he's known in the solitude, in the place of solemnity, the Lord speaks to us. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, understand the place of encounters. Now, encounters can be walked. <laughs> you see, when people say things about how you can galvanize an encounter, I laugh because what we are doing is that we are trying to predict God like it is science. Read through scriptures, men encounter God in varied spaces and in varied places. Jacob encountered God while he was on the run from his brother Esau. He wasn't feeling spiritual. He was tired, sleeping, and he saw the Lord at Bethel. The Lord chooses how he will attend to us. Elijah was in a better space. He on the run from that woman Jezebel. 
and the voice of the Lord came, he was in a better place. You could say he was in a spiritual journey. And then he had the law. And he received instruction that was transgenerational. Peter was fishing when Jesus came. Saul of Taxus was on his way to destroy when Jesus came. Peter was hungry. After a while, he slept and he saw a vision. Yes. Cornelius was in prayers when the angels appeared to him. The Lord chooses in his magnanimity, I will encounter people. The things of the Spirit are not mechanics. Stop doing mechanics with the things of the Spirit. The Father is still the Lord of all grace and all comfort. And he chooses what he will do at the time he will do it and with whom he will do it. He doesn't answer to anybody. We have no space and no place in scriptures where we can orchestrate spiritual encounters. I've had encounters with God while I was on the mountain. And I've had encounters with God after hitting. One thing about encounters is that no one encounter God truly and remains the same. The supernatural does not rub upon a man and leaves him absolutely natural. The force of an encounter will shift your spirit forward. Jacob became Israel after meeting with God. Abraham became Abraham and Saul became Paul of Tarsus. Why no man can underestimate the power of an encounter? You must know that God's plan is not just that we encounter him once, but we have continual encounters with him. You can spend 90 minutes with Jesus every day, every day in your room. That's an encounter with the Lord. Encounters are not just about seeing visions and mysteries. Encounters in the word. When the Lord unveils his word to you, that's an encounter with that's an encounter with the word. The only way we can know the Lord is to engage him every day like we are going to encounter a supernatural being. We must have that mindset that it is greatness I'm going to encounter today. I am going to stay with the Lord of Lords. Not until you sleep and then something happened and then you saw a white vision. No, sir. No, sir. As you read your Bible in your small room, in your big parlor, the Lord will reveal himself to you. It's an encounter with the person of all grace. Listen, our encounters are limited by our intimacy with him. The more I draw close to God, the more of him he reveals to me. Only those who have relationship with him have lasting encounters with him. Not just one day, but continuous encounters happens because you are intimate with the Lord. Relationship with God is vitally important if you are going to grow. Listen to this, dear friends. Your life must be lived as an outward expression of the vital information from your secret communion with heaven. Let God alone determine even the pattern of your life. Let God alone determine the pattern of your life. If you really want to get to know God better, you must make every day and every time you spend with God a time of an encounter with Him. If you have that mindset, if you have that approach, you'll begin to gain more in your time with the Lord. But the way we approach our, our quiet time, the way we approach our time with the Maker is that we approach it as just another time. Just another time. Just another duty. Just another exercise. That's why we don't gain more. But when we begin to approach it as an encounter with the divine, as a time with him who made the heavens and the earth, as a time with the creator of all things, as an encounter with Jesus, then we begin to gain more. We begin to enter into more. And we begin to know him more. That our prayers, dear friends, will be that I may know him and the power 
even of his resurrection. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. And let's just together pray that prayer. This night, Lord, that I may know you, that I may know you. It's a deep prayer. I had Kennedy Egizet for many years. One of Pauline prayers. This was one of the Pauline prayers, was one of his prayers. And when he said that for many years, it was one of my prayers also. Lord, that I may know you, that I may know you, that I may know you. Is that your prayer this evening? Lord, that I may know you. It's my prayer that it will not just be your prayer this evening, but will be your prayer for the rest of your life, that I may know you, that I may know you. Let that prayer not just be something that comes from your head. Let it be a spiritual thing. Because if our heart is set aright, if we desire to know the Lord, then we shall pursue Him. Because His going forth is as the burning. He's going to shine His light even upon our lives. Can we pursue Him tonight? Can we pursue Him tonight with a good heart condition? Just a heart that is plain and open and perfect before the Lord and saying, Lord, I just want to know You. I just want to be where You are, dwelling daily, in your presence. I just want to love you from my heart. <laughs> Dwelling daily in your presence. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. Father, we just want to be with you. Father, we just want to be with you. We just want to dwell where you dwell. We just want to feast in your table. We want to be surrounded by the glory of your presence. Lord, our heart cries that we may know you. From now begin to reveal yourself to us. Father, that you will tell us what we need to do right. That you will show us the path of righteousness. That you will give unto us clean earth, O God. That our prayers will not just be about petitions, but about knowing you. Lord, reveal yourself to us. Share about you to us. Unveil or mask yourself to us. Let your presence be with us, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. What an heaviness of God's glory. What such grace, such goodness. And I'm sure you can test him right there. Such goodness, such glory, such joy. It's my prayer that your life will never be the same again. It's my prayer that these treasures, these pearls you found even this evening will last you eternity. And upon these pillars, you will build your spiritual life. The reason why people pray so much and enter into so little in God is their heart condition. If you can fix your heart, then you will discover that you can also know the Lord. He's not hiding from you. He wants to show himself to you. The reason you are not getting to know him more, the reason you are not increasing in the knowledge of the Christ is because of your heart conviction. Fix your heart and it will fix your spiritual life. The Lord keep you. The Lord help you. And the Lord make his face shine even upon you. Holy Spirit, keep convicting. Holy Spirit, keep working on the heart of your people until there be a place for Jesus and Jesus alone, even in the heart. Let every idol lifted that is not Christ, let them be smashed, let them be destroyed. Let Jesus alone be the Lord, even of their heart. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, and amen.